Meet Eddie Bernays. He is considered the father of modern advertising, most famous for turning the largely abhorred word propaganda into the fluffy, warm euphemism public relations. Bernays haphazardly took popular ideas from Freudian psychoanalysis and began to apply them to advertising campaigns. The idea was simple: link and exploit the very primitive social urges common to most humans, such as sexuality and status, to a product. Seems so much longer than last year. It is nearly four inches longer in some models. Oh. Goods were to become less relevant in their utility and more of a symbol representing one's identity or individualism, effectively turning mere wants into emotional needs. Bernays was a response to a growing call by industrial leaders to reprogram society and create a new consumer culture. Charles Kettering, director of General Motors in 1929, wrote of the need to keep the consumer dissatisfied. Wall Street banker Paul Mazur said. We must shift America from a needs to a desires culture. People must be trained to desire, to want things even before the old have been entirely consumed. We must shape a new mentality in America, and it worked. Technological innovation in radio and television helped further this end by a saturation campaign throughout American society, which quickly spread across the world. Advertising no longer was about describing, say, the function of a good and its inherent integrity. It was now about social manipulation, creating inferiority, shame, guilt, and false problems that could only be resolved by submission to purchase. Over an 80-year lifespan, we watch 15 and a half years of television on average. 15 and a half years of having our brains liquefied and sodomized, zombified, and then glorifying products and nonsense. And that screws with us because advertisements are assholes. You see, at the core of advertising is the exploitation of our deep social nature. It turns the empathic community identification into a weapon of external judgment and relative insecurity. In fact, some years back, a multi-year study where Western television was brought into a culture which had never experienced it before was conducted on the island of Fiji. By the end of the observation period, the effect of materialistic values and vanity took a powerful toll. A relevant percentage of young women, for example, who prior had embraced a style of healthy weight and full features, became obsessed with being thin. Eating disorders, which were virtually unheard of in this culture, began to spread, and women specifically were transformed. But let's return to our history lesson. This vanity, materialism, and obsessive consumption neuroses, as powerful as it is, was not quite enough to ensure the stability of the capitalist religion and the ongoing benefit to the ownership class priests. The engineering of consent through advertising aside, the technological age brought another nasty problem for business: increased product efficiency. Not only was production moving faster than traditional consumption. The actual quality of individual goods were increasing as well, due to scientific advancements in design, making needed repeat purchases increasingly less common. Well, this was no good. Remember, the core driver of labor, profit, and consumption, hence the core driver of our economy in general, is scarcity and inefficiency. In fact, the enemy of the market economy has always been competency, and the better and long-lasting a good is, the worse it is for industry.